Thanks for joining this Facebook Live. I'm here in my office in New York. I uh, just had lunch with Bjorn Lomborg uh, of the Copenhagen Consensus. Bjorn is uh, originally a political scientist and statistician who has aroused a lot of interest because of his analyses with a huge group of, of uh, economists and experts, including a bunch of Nobel Prize winners, about essentially where you get the most bang for the buck in investing in trying to make a better world and fighting global poverty and this kind of thing. And um, uh, Bjorn has aroused some controversy, uh, partly because he argues that uh, uh, fighting climate change uh, gets you less bang for the buck than you know things like nutrition for children. But um, now you you have a you just gave away the whole thing. Away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you um, you have a uh, analysis of the benefits for every dollar spent in various places. I'm struck that you know I think we often think that the you know what we can do in the developing world that is going to save the most lives is like you know build a well somewhere, for example. And obviously building wells is a great thing to do and mm -hmm. does save lives. But but you argue, for example, that um, that the you get an awful lot more gains, for example, by providing uh, women with contraception. Yep. So exactly. I mean, we. I should just say, you know, this is the very one pager of, of lots and lots, right. you know, thousands of pages from a lot of really, really smart economists. But yes, exactly. When you look at where can you spend a dollar and do a lot of good, that answer is important because we do spend dollars and we want to know where we can do the most good. If you spend it on you know, sanitation, it, it, it feels like it should really do a lot of good. The problem is sanitation is actually fairly costly and it doesn't save as many lives as we used to think. We used to think it was like in more than a million now, it's probably more like 300,000. So every dollar spent will do about $3 worth of good. That's a good investment. But right. here's the kicker. If you spent the same dollar on contraception for women. Remember, there's more than 200 million women who still don't have access to contraception. And who don't if, want to have babies. Who yeah, don't who, want to yeah. have babies. If you give it to them, it will have a significant cost, about $3.6 billion. But you will both avoid women dying in childbirth. You will give them better opportunities to space their kids so their kids will die less. And because you overall get slightly fewer kids, you will get more productive, uh, pro more productivity. You will get a demographic dividend. Overall, our experts estimate for every dollar spent on contraception, you will do a hundred and twenty dollars worth of good. So, wow. so this is about forty times as much yeah, yes. benefit or so as yes. in uh, some of the sanitation efforts. And in other words, is this not just an issue of what is a human right or helping people for reasons of justice, but that as an economic investment? This is uh, for try to find hedge fund investment that will get you $120 return on your <laughs> dollar of, investment. Of course, we have to be careful and, and say, you're not going to be able to invest this and get $120. You're going right. to do $120 worth of good, good that's in right. the world. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, you know, one of the, uh, you find that one of the, um, uh, the things that gets the, does the most good is something we don't think of as a kind of do-gooder project at all, which is, but it's expanding trade yep. and actually in this presidential campaign, uh, uh, there are probably a lot of people who are going to be kind of horrified at that. But So tell me, why does trade do so much good in terms of saving lives or reducing global poverty? So fundamentally, if you look back on the last 30 years, where did we get almost all of the, uh, of the opportunity of pulling people out of poverty? It was in China, to a very large extent, because China embraced free trade. There was a number of other things. But fundamentally, getting more free trade means everyone can do a little more effective uh, uh, production. You do what you're best at, I do what I'm best at, and we trade. But also, it actually increases the growth rate of all these countries, you know, South Korea, China, many other places. China lifted, what, 680 million people out of poverty. We estimate if you just go for a successful Doha round, so remember, this is not free trade, it's slightly freer trade right. for the whole right. world. You could end up making the world about 10% richer every year. That's about $1,000 per person per year in the developing countries. That's, for many people, it would be a doubling of their income. Now, there is some problems of distribution, and that's one of the things that the presidential campaign is about, because not everyone gains, right. but the vast majority do. And if we also are careful about how to do this politically, 
we could have an incredible benefit. So we estimate the costs are mainly in convincing, you know, for instance, farmers in rich countries like the EU and in the US and Japan. But for every dollar you spend, you would probably do about $2,000 of social good in the rest of the world. Wow. And a lot of the other things that your, uh, you know, your, your economists have come up with are um, the things that you know, people talk about. They, uh, you've got a huge bang for the buck in uh, fighting tuberculosis, huge killer yeah. around the developing world, reducing malaria yeah. infections. And we, you know, we know how to do that with bed nets and other, and other means. Uh, uh, and nutrition also. Sure. Nutrition. The um, thank you for mentioning. I'm I'm a nutrition. Uh, I know. Long you're, you're, yeah. <laughs> Micronutrients. You, uh, which uh, which I get excited by. You know, if you um, if you're drinking milk or if you're uh, you know in in, in so many products, food, uh, bread and so on, then there those products are often fortified with. Um, um, with folic acid, uh, with iron, with other products, and it's so easy and cheap to do that in the developing world, and you find just enormous yep. returns on investing yep. in those micronutrients. And, and, and the simple reason is, if you actually make sure that kids get better nutrition, their brains will develop more, and that means once they start going to school, they will learn more each year they're in school, they they'll also be more stay productive. longer, As and adults. when they come out, they'll be more productive. We actually know, we have pretty good evidence now because we have a number of long-term studies that indicate that for every dollar you spend, you will do $45 of social good for these kids. So that's an amazing wow. investment. Again, you know, it's all about making sure, you, you know, you can spend your money and do a lot of good in many different places, but some places you'll just do a little good, some places you'll do an amazing amount of good. Let's do those places first. And um, maybe one last question. You, uh, you have a category for education. Yep. And uh, it's striking that I mean, you, you say education more than pays for itself. Um, but that the area of education that gets the most bang for the buck is not improving access to university around the world, not getting more kids in high school, uh, not even elementary school. No. It's, it's preschool. Yep. Uh, that, that is far and away where you would get the, uh, you say, triple preschool in sub-Saharan Africa, every dollar invested is $33 worth of good. Um, so why preschool? So fundamentally two reasons. If you focus on the early part of school, it's cheaper because the teachers don't need to be as well educated and you have longer impacts. So if you get to the kids very early on, you get a lifetime addiction to learning and a yearning for more knowledge. So it has a huge benefit and a low cost, whereas it's often the opposite. If you go to high school or university, it's a lot bigger cost, and the extra benefits are somewhat lower. This is not, again, to say, of course, we in should an ideal world, yeah. we should do everything. Right. But we're not in that world. We're in a world where we're not doing many of the things that we should be doing. And so we're simply saying, let's focus on the very best things where we can do the most good first. Um, and uh, again, so I've been speaking with uh, Bjorn Lomborg from the Copenhagen Consensus. What is the website if people want to go and... and... And you can go and see all the, the, the literature there. This is for the world that we've talked about. And we're also doing this, for, for instance, with Bangladesh and many other countries. We're doing Haiti. We're moving on to India. So getting people to start thinking about where can you spend a dollar and do the most good. Well, and this fits right in with uh, the UN uh, about to come here to New York to uh, meet to discuss, discuss uh, the fight against global poverty. Thanks very much for joining uh, this conversation, and I'll see you soon.